In October of 2016, I acquired a Dell E6430, 8 gigs of RAM, 320 on the hard drive, and running uh, with i7 core, it's a dual core. Anyway, the problem is, is that 320 hard drive, which uh, I want to upgrade to a one terabyte SSD plus HDD. In order to do that, first thing we're going to have to do is get the Seagate's wizard installed on this computer so that we can make a bootable USB so that we can migrate the OS from this system onto this one because I don't have the original uh, OS since it was bought used. So first thing we have to do is download the program. Once downloaded, I am going to copy this to my USB because this desktop does not have any Samsung or Seagate drives on it so or a Mac store. So the application will not recognize it. So therefore, I'm going to copy it onto the USB. Once the Disk Wizard application is on the USB, we insert it into the laptop, locate the USB, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this to the desktop because I'll be formatting that USB to be uh, a boot up disk. It's done copying. I can close the Explorer window. I launch the Disk Wizard. You'll be prompt to install the Disk Wizard only if you have a Seagate, Samsung, or um, Matrox hard drive in your system. Otherwise, you'll have to buy the, uh, the full application. Once installed, start the application and tell it that you want a Rescue Media Builder. Well, the application will show you two choices. In reality, you can only select one because this is a pay option. This is included with the program. So now it searches and we're going to tell it that we want to go to the removable disk, which is our USB drive. Here's the summary. Our target drive is the F drive, which is the USB, and we'll proceed. Then all you do is wait for the appropriate files to copy over to your USB, and then it'll be bootable. Once completed, you'll get the message that it has been successful. Now, turn off the system and reboot it to see if it'll launch onto that USB. During boot up, F2 on the Dell will get you into the BIOS setting. Then we just scroll down to sequence and make sure that USB is one of the options for booting up. Here's the system starting up. Let's see if it recognizes the USB. And voila! The USB is now the OS system for the computer. Now that we have our bootable wizard on the USB, Seagate wants us to install the new card onto the laptop and then use an external connector for the old disk and plug that in via the USB. So you can buy cables at your local electronics or computer store. Uh, what I did was I ripped this off an older um, portable drive and that's the connectors to a SATA card and this just goes to a USB. So we're going to flip the computer over, take the battery out and remove the old hard drive, put this in the cage, put it back into the system, plug this in with the old hard drive attached to it and then we should be in business. So we remove the batteries because we don't want this unit to be energized while we're working with it. I've previously removed the two hard drive screws so this should
come out pretty easy. And here's the old 320 drive. And all we have to do is, let's see if there's screws on this. There's a screw here and probably, nope, not on this side. So it looks like all I have to do is remove that one screw and the drive will come out. With the screw removed, the front plate comes off, the isolation on the left and the right side comes off. And now carefully place this drive over here. We're going to plug it into this SATA connector. We then take the new drive and attach the isolators to it. And in theory, it should be the same fit. Then you can proceed with putting on the faceplate and attaching the screw. It'll snap in on one side, screw in on the other. So we ran into a bit of an issue. It seems that the original card is a little bit thinner than the new one. So the rails had to be shaved. Actually, I had to cut them in half. So what I did was the rail wraps around the top and bottom. So I slid it and just used that bottom portion and it got it in there and uh, it's snug. So now our next step is put the battery into the laptop, turn it over. So the drive is in. We've attached the battery. We've plugged in the old drive via USB. We have our USB boot drive also plugged in. Now we're going to turn on the computer and it should boot to the drive and we should be able to clone everything off of this drive onto the brand new internal drive. And there's the wizard and we tell the Seagate that we want to go to the wizard. When the interface shows up we go down to tools and utility and what we want to do is we want to clone because we want to make an exact copy of everything onto the new drive. There are two choices, manual or automatic. We're going to go with automatic. We hit next. It says that we have the source drive. So we know that the source drive is going to be the 298. You come down and you hit next. Now it's going to ask you to pick the target drive. Well, the target drive would be that one terabyte drive, which is sitting all by itself, and it's not initialized. So that'd be disk two in our case. Then we hit next. Then you get a page which shows you that disk one is the source, disk two is the target. So once you've pressed proceed, you'll get a status update of the operation and you'll be given the choice to either restart the computer when it's done or to shut down. I'm choosing to shut down because remember we have a USB that is bootable. We don't want it to reboot to that. So it is counting down. Interesting to note that the countdown status is not real time. It's much slower than real time, so when it says 8 minutes, it's probably closer to 10. And now it tells us to press enter to reboot the computer. So we hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to pull out this USB drive. Disconnect the external drive. Tell Windows to boot up normally and see what happens. And it looks like the desktop that was on that drive, which included Disk Wizard. Let's see what our storage is. You see that it is 931, which is one terabyte. It is one partition. So the Disk Wizard not only clone the information, 
it also used up the entire space on the new drive because as you recall the original drive was only a 320 and a disk wizard in the auto mode took care of everything for us so now I am running my Win 7 on my system with a one terabyte drive what to do with the old hard drive well you can you could use it as an external drive reformat it or you could just keep that with this USB drive and that'll be your recovery drive should your internal drive fail or you know fall victim to a virus or some malware but it'll be a great way to get back to that original OS and which was in my case a clean system